joining us through live stream. Uh, before we start our service, let's pray. Father God, we come before you tonight in the name of Jesus, thanking you, God, for everything that you've given unto us, your grace and your rich mercy, the goodness that follows us every day of our life. Tonight, we bring this uh, service before you. We pray for every listener that are listening. We pray for everyone that's watching tonight. And God, you would, by your Holy Spirit, speak to us, minister to us. We uphold tonight, especially Sister Shaggy, and we want to believe that God, your hands is upon her. And Lord God Almighty, we want to thank you for restoring her health, uh, bringing her back to full recovery for the glory of your name. Tonight also we bring everyone uh, that are, have a need in their life. We pray God, your will be done in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Tonight we're going to turn to First John chapter 2, verse 9 to verse 11. And now, uh, verse 9 says, uh, He who say he is in the light and hate his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there's no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness, does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. So, um, in regard to the announcement, so just take note, uh, the night service for Wednesday and Sunday night for the time being uh, is all live stream. Uh, Sunday morning, we gather together for service. And uh, take note, Christmas Eve service is on Thursday night, 8 p.m. sharp. Uh, we come together on that night for the Eve service. Amen. So if uh, you have bought presents for the children, do bring it on Sunday morning so that uh, um, we can uh, uh, pass it to the children, okay? So anyway, uh, this evening we are still on the uh, message on idols of emotions. And uh, this topic of uh, the idols of the emotion actually came about through an article that I came across from a website called Desiring God website. Uh, Desiring God website is a Christian website that uh, publishes, uh, publishes many different Christian articles. And uh, one of them, a few months ago, spoke on the subject of uh, the danger of emotions uh, becoming an idol uh, in itself. Uh, in that article, uh, it, uh, it speaks about the time when Pontius Pilate told the Jews that he found no wrong with Jesus. And uh, Pontius Pilate would only chastise him. And after that, Pontius Pilate is going to release him. Um, uh, the scripture then has this to say in Luke 23, 18 to verse 24. And they cry out, all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas. So Barabbas is a murderer and a, a rebel, a rebel. And in verse 20, Pilate therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. And listen to verse 21, And they cry, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Pontius Pilate, Why, what evil had he done? I found no cause of death in him. I would therefore chastise him and let him go. Verse 23, And they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed 
and verse 24, and Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. So the scripture says in verse 18, and they cry out all at once. The word of God says in verse 21, and they cry out saying, crucify him, crucify him. And then in verse 23, they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. So we find here uh, in this passage of scriptures in Luke 23, uh, those who wanted Jesus crucified were filled with emotions. They cried out, they cried out. Uh, they were in an emotional high. And uh, when their emotion became their authority, their, their guide, their, their leader in a way, the emotion led them to the point of deciding right as wrong and wrong as right. A murderer and a rebellion, uh, they asked to be released by the name of Barnabas. Uh, Barnabas, sorry. Uh, does not matter if he is a murderer. Does not matter if he kills someone's son, someone's daughter, uh, instead of an innocent man, Jesus Christ. Now tonight, I'd like to look with you at uh, and another emotion, and uh, and I and I and I don't think any one of you uh, probably have heard of this word before, uh, including myself, uh, until I came to the letter L, and um, that word is the word uh, loaf, okay, load, okay, which is spelled L O A. T H E, okay. It is pronounced as load, okay. Which the word load means intense dislike or intense disgust. The common word is the word hatred or intense hatred. But we're gonna stick to the word intense dislike or strong dislike or the word load. Tonight, it is a word listed under the list of words that's considered emotional. Now, for this emotion, I would like to look at two sides of uh, this strong dislike. And that is a dislike for others and also an intense dislike for oneself. A strong dislike for others and a strong, intense dislike for oneself. The Jews at that time has an intense dislike for Jesus. And their intense emotional dislike not only blind them, but also deaf them to the point that they became unreasonable or to the point that they cannot be reasoned. Okay, Pontius Pilate reasoned with them, you know what, I found no wrong in this man, I found no wrong in this man, you know, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just chastise him, and then I'm going to release him, but they still insist that Jesus is guilty, and uh, what makes it worse is that they instead ask for a murderer, a rebel, to be released instead. Intense dislike or hatred against another can bring uh, to the person filled with that dislike a wrong a judging of a, a situation uh, that may backfire, that could backfire, that, that would backfire against that person who is filled with love, okay, who is filled with strong dislike for another. Listen to what their intense hate, strong dislike for Jesus, uh, caused them to do to themselves. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 22 to 25, I read to you, Pilate say unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus? which is called Christ. 
they all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor say, Why? What evil had he done? But they cry out the more. They were so emotional, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate, verse 24, saw that he could prevail nothing, but that, but that, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. Pilate still insists that Jesus is just. Uh, See ye to it. Listen to verse 25, what they then say and uh, tonight. Then answer all the people and say, His blood be on us and on our children. Okay. They begin to say to Pontius Pilate, who found no wrong with Jesus, they say to Pontius Pilate, you know, crucify him. And then they say, his blood, the blood of Jesus, be on us and be on our children. Words we all know contains death and life. And whoever love it shall eat of it. And it could be when all of them say, His blood be on us and on our children. It could be their own words brought about the Holocaust. Okay? The Holocaust is uh, when uh, six million Jewish people during the uh, end of Hitler reign in, in the 1940s. Okay, when, when Adolf Hitler or 1930s uh, reign ruled Germany, uh, what happened is that six million Jews uh, died. Could it be this evening when they spoke those words okay, in their emotional high, in their strong dislike for Jesus, strong hatred for Jesus, could it be when they say, His blood be on us, and be on our children. They brought a curse upon themselves. And out from that, what happened? Uh, the Holocaust, could it be that took place uh, and whereby six million Jewish people perish? First John chapter 2, verse 9 to verse 11. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or a sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister live in the light, and there's nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. When one has strong dislike for another, one becomes, becomes blind. Ones end up not knowing where one is going. So there is the part of others uh, which tonight uh, could, could cause uh, that person, when that person has strong, intense dislike, to end up spiritually blind tonight. But loathing is not just to others. Okay? A strong dislike, there is also such a thing as self or strong self dislike, self loathing. Okay? Now, as Christians, we are called to many things towards ourselves, such as we are called to examine ourselves, we are called to also encourage ourselves at times like David did. We are called to humble ourselves. We are called to repent or to have a broken or contrived heart. But we are not called to have a strong, intense dislike towards ourselves. In the book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 1 to 4, and also verse 17, in which is a chapter about David, a horrible sin against God when he committed adultery against Bathsheba. And uh, we find in Psalms 51 
is David's confession to God, whereby he says in verse 1, Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. In verse 17, he has this to say, the sacrifices of God are a broken and contrived heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. David here is in guilt, when before God in confession, in brokenness pleading God for his mercy, for the sins he has done against thee, have I sinned, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. He did not go on a self loathing or on an intense, strong self-dislike against himself. Okay, but he went before God, broken for the things he has done against God. For a broken heart and a contrite heart, God will not despise. God will not look down. But when it comes to self loathing okay, it is a sin. Now, the main reason why self loathing a strong dislike against self is wrong, is because when someone has deep, intense dislike for self, he is by doing so uh, loathing the creator or the maker who created or make him in his image and likeness. All of us this evening are wonderfully and skillfully made, made in the image of God. And when we uh, loat ourselves, we are loathing the one who made us. In Psalms 139, there are three written words that speaks of why self-loathing or strong dislike against oneself is wrong. And uh, or four words there. And those four words are fearfully, you are fearfully, wonderfully, marvelously, and precious. Okay. Uh, uh, made. Reading from 13 to verse 17, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Thy eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God, how great is the sum of them. How can it be right when someone has so strong a dislike over oneself when one is fearfully, wonderfully, and marvelously made? By doing so, it is to say that God made a mistake making us, making you. And God does not make mistakes. And I believe the same result would be the same for whether our intense dislike is towards others or our intense dislike is towards ourselves. That is, we become also spiritually blind, blind in the sense that his darkness covers our eyes from seeing where we are going, from saying what we should not be saying. Now, if so, 
One is the cause for self loathing uh, ourselves. First, it has to do with the with the spiritual reason behind it, and that is it has to do with the demonic. Why a person would have strong self dislike? First, it has to do with the spiritual. It has to do with the demonic. When I was growing up, I believe on the whole I was, you know, uh, not, you know, not bad looking, you know, except that I have much what you call that pimples. But I do have many plus points in me. Okay? Uh, but I have a great difficulty, you know, liking myself. You know, I'm, I'm quite tall in a way. I'm very active in sports, you know. Uh, physically, I'm, I'm okay, you know. But, um, but I have much strong plus points, but I have a great difficulty liking myself. All I see myself were on the side that is negative. Okay? Uh, demonic in the sense of a lie being told. You know? When you begin to have strong dislike towards yourself, um, there is the presence of uh, the spiritual demonic side that would begin to try to lie to you, begin to try to tell you that uh, to try to paint all the negative things about you to the point that you would begin to look at yourself in a negative way. Okay. Secondly, it has to do maybe with spoken words, spoken against you. Words that have been spoken about maybe the way you look, about uh, the, the way you do things, or about you know, the way you talk, you know, Instead of words of encouragement, instead of words to help build you up, uh, words that are negative has been spoken at you time and time again. And uh, from those words, what happened is that it began to create an image uh, uh, to yourself. You begin to look at yourself through the words that has been spoken to you. And what happened is those words that are negative begin to form an image to yourself. And when you look at yourself, you begin to look at those words that are spoken to you that are negative. And down the line, uh, when you do not know how to deal with it or, or when you do not deal with it, what happened is that you begin to uh, dislike yourself. Also, it could be mistakes or failures. You, know, you make a mistake. You make a failure or you did something and it failed and, and you begin to uh, dislike yourself or maybe it could be rejection. Okay, maybe it could be have, uh, past rejections and that begin to cause you to begin to have that strong dislike towards yourself. Now, as with all emotional sins, there is a cure. There is healing. There is an answer. And the first is tonight is to use the, the Lord's way as a Christian of dealing with loathing. Okay? If you have loathing for others or could loathing for yourself, is to use the Lord's way, the Word of God, to uh, 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 bring healing to your own heart from this problem. Luke chapter 6, Jesus has this to say in verse 28. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who spitefully use you. Okay. Jesus says to us and to the disciples, to those who curse you, okay, to those who use you, Jesus says bless them. And pray for them. Okay? Even for yourself. Okay? So Jesus says, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who spitefully use you. So when you are confronted with a strong dislike, intense, strong hatred. Okay? Jesus' way is to find, uh, is to use the way of blessing 
and they used the way of praying. Okay? Pray and bless. Bless your enemies. Bless those who cause you to have those deep hatred to form in your heart. Bless and pray. The second way is the way of counsel. In Proverbs 24, verse number 6, For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors there is safety. Seek counsel for your problem. Okay? Talk to a spiritual, someone whom, who is spiritually matured. Okay? And seek counsel from that person okay, about the problems, about the deep hatred you have. Okay? Many times these spiritually matured people have, will have words of wisdom, words of life okay, that comes from the word of God, that comes from their own experience. They begin to share with you and begin to help you to come out from that deep uh, hatred. Intense hatred, one of the things about it, it, it can be a very strong, strong hold. Okay? It can strongly bind a person. Okay? And, and, uh, and the person, and that person that's strongly bound will have a problem of uh, getting out from that strong uh, hatred. Not if he goes and seeks counsel from someone matured. Because out from that counsel, which would come from the word of God, come from his own experience, normally what happens is that that person will also pray for you, or for that person who seek counsel. Okay? Pray for deliverance, pray for healing. Another way of healing is to forgive. Forgive that person and also forgive yourself. Colossians 3.13 Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgive you. Forgive as the Lord forgive you. When the Lord was hanging on the cross, the Lord looks at all the people that were looking at him and says, uh, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Lastly, uh, go before the throne of grace. Go to Jesus Christ and ask him to heal you of uh, this uh, sickness, I would call it, this emotional problem that you are having. So tonight, as we bring this to a close tonight, um, uh, strong, intense uh, dislike, a strong, intense hatred. The word loathing. Okay, it is a sin. But tonight we thank God that there's a cure. The cure tonight is when we begin to come before the Lord Jesus Christ, and when we begin to honestly bring uh, that problem that we have, that emotional problem before God then the Lord can bring healing to your heart. Amen. Let's bow our heads tonight. Let's pray tonight. Where you are, maybe, you, maybe you're watching through live stream. It's the sound of my voice through this sermon tonight. Maybe God is speaking uh, to your heart. Maybe deep inside you, there's this Emotion called loathing. Strong dislike. Maybe it's not for others. Maybe you have a strong dislike towards yourself. You, have, you don't like yourself. Yeah. You, have, you hate yourself. But tonight the Lord wants to heal you, wants to set you free. And I want to pray for you wherever you may be tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight we bring those who are going through this pain, those who are going through this, this problem, this emotional problem. 
Father, we pray for divine healing through Jesus Christ upon them. Wherever they may be, Lord, we pray, heal and set them free from the strong dislike towards themselves and cause them to see themselves like you see them. Cause them to forgive themselves for all that is, that is in the past, for all the things that are negative in their life. And if so, God, if they have this strong dislike over someone, Lord, I pray, pour your love upon them, that they have the love of Christ in their heart to begin to do as you, you tell them to do, to bless and to pray, to bless their enemies and to pray for those who use them. In the name of Jesus Christ tonight, thank you for speaking to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. Amen.